Shalom. Welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumari, and uh, in this video we'll talk about this question, whether God sought to kill Moses after he commissioned Moses to go to Egypt and get the children of Israel out of Egypt. In the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse 24, we read, Vayhi vaderech bammalon vayif geshehu adonai Vaivakesh Hamito. So in came to pass in the way, in the inn, a lodge, a motel, Bamalon, Malone, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. He sought Vaivakesh Hamito to kill him. So the question then is kill who? Let's go forward. Here we read then Vatika Sipora Tsor. Sipora took a stone. Vatikhrot et orlat bana. So she cut off the foreskin of her son. Vetaga le raglav. And she cast it at his feet. Okay, Sipora, she circumcised her son, that's very clear. And she cast it, put threw it at, at his feet. Whose feet? Le raglav. Is at the feet of Moses or the feet of the child or if uh, the Lord had appeared through the angel then if it is the feet of the angel how and then she said what Tomer ki khatan damim atali you are well the King James Bible translates a bloody husband we'll look at the meaning of this one surely a bloody husband art thou to me it means a bridegroom of blood Okay, so God sought to kill him whom then suddenly Zipporah does the circumcision to her son. So did the Lord seek to kill Moses or did he seek to kill his son? There were two sons, Gershom and Eliezer. So probably the little one, the second one, because he might not have been circumcised, which is why she circumcised. And so that's the question. And then the next verse we read, Vairef Mimenu Az Amra Khatan Damin Lamulot. So let he, so he let him go. Vairef Mimenu. Who let whom go? Well, the, the Lord let him go. So he wanted to kill him, whoever, Moses or Eliezer. But he let him go because of the circumcision performed. And then she said, Az Amra, and then she said, Khatan Damim Lamulot. Mila is the circumcision. For the sake of the circumcision, you are a Khatan Damim. So, what is happening? So, let's get some background, right? What is going on? A few verses before the story, we read that the Lord said to Moses, Where Amarta El Paro. Or far o, you know, the, in the in the pay, the, the dot is not there. It is far o, far o, rain, far o. Ko amar Adonai beni bechori Yisrael. The Lord told Moses, "Thou thou shalt say to Pharaoh that you should you should say to Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord." Ko amar Adonai. This is a you know formula that occurs throughout the Bible. Whenever the prophets say, they say Ko amar Adonai. Meaning, thus saith the Lord, Ko Amar Adonai, Beni Bechori Yisrael, my son, my firstborn is Israel. The Israel is the son and the firstborn. Paro, Faro. Here there is no Dagesh. If there is a Dagesh, then it is Paro, Paro, otherwise Faro. Okay, so it is pointed both ways. In some places there is Dagesh, some places it is not because of the flow of the words, I suppose. But I think the word is Faro. Okay, Bechor means the firstborn. So a couple of words we're learning here, Bechor. And then what happened when God said that? He said, Va Umar Elecha Shallach Eth Bini. They have Deni Vatama En Le Shallehu Hine Anohi Horeg Eth Bincha Bechorecha. So this word says that I say unto you, let my son go or send away my son that he may serve me. 
and if you refuse to send him or let him go, Hine, behold, I will anochi horeg et bincha, I will kill your son, Bechorecha, you thy firstborn, your firstborn. Right. So, this obviously, and I say unto thee, are the words uttered by who? Let's go back. God said to Moses, you shall say to Pharaoh like this, Ko amar Adonai, thus saith the Lord, Beni, uh, Beni Bechori Israel, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Okay, so those are the words of the Lord. And I say unto thee, that is, God says to Pharaoh, let my son go, that is, let Israel go, that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, let Israel go. Behold, I will slay your son, that is the son of Pharaoh, even your firstborn. Well, that much is very plain. And in the next verse we read, So, and it came to pass, by the way, in the inn, in the motel, that the Lord met him, a hotel or whatever, it's a lodge, met him and sought to kill him. So kill who? Why is this happening after this verse? That's the question. It looks like that this verse 423 has a double meaning. It says, and I say unto thee, that is God saying to Pharaoh, it could also perhaps mean that God is saying to Moses, let my son go, that is free up my son, and who is that son? We'll see that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And he's telling Moses, and because Moses did not let his son go, God's son go, God comes and meets him, seeks to kill Moses' son. Well, he's not a firstborn, though it is not a firstborn. Or maybe he tried to kill Gershom. It's not very clear there in the text, is it? So that's that that way you can connect this verse 24 and the verse 23 by suggesting that verse 23 has a double meaning. It's a it's a double entendre, like um it, it, it is addressed to Pharaoh, but also it is addressed to Moses. Now that brings up uh, another question: who is God's son here, and who is Moses' son? We'll come to that. So here are a few verses, Bakash seek, require. That's the word that we looked at. And vaivakesh, uh, and he sought. Right, so bakash. And in the next verse we read, Hatan damim. And so Sipora took the stone, she cut off the foreskin, and circumcised, cast at his feet, and she said, Hatan damim, who? So who is the Hatan damim? It means a bridegroom of blood. So perhaps she's obviously addressing Moses. She's saying that you are a bridegroom of blood for me because of what I have to do to my son. Perhaps I do not know if she was. We we just can't, cannot say. I think some people, some rabbis think this is this refers to Moses, obviously, uh, and that's because his life was saved. His life could have been in danger, um, and so Chatan Damim, that is a bridegroom of blood. In what sense? It's just a bit difficult to say, to be honest. And so, so he let him go. So here is the here is the question. Here here is the main point. So he let him go. Who let him go? Who let who go? The Lord let Moses go, or the Lord let whoever he wanted to kill. He let him go. That's one meaning, obviously. Or you could take, you know, looking at this verse 23, where we said there are two meanings to verse 23. In the first meaning, Pharaoh would let Israel go. But in the second meaning, if this is applied to Moses, then Moses lets the son go. Uh, so he let him go. So you you can I think in the text apply these um, in multiple ways simply because of the pronouns or the pronominal suffixes are very ambiguous. It cause it doesn't tell us uh, who exactly we're talking about. So here is what I'm suggesting. If we look at the text, 
He says, let my son go. If you refuse to let him go, I will slay your son. But then after saying that, he says him, and the Lord met him and sought to kill him. He said, I will slay. But he said he will sought to kill. That word there is horeg, horeg, to kill. Here, of course, hamitho, to, to make him dead or to kill. It's both the same. The meaning is the same, but uh, they're different words. Here, so let him go is vayiref me menu. It's a different root, let him go here, uh, when compared to the let him go here. Let my son go or let him go. If you see, the, the word is shalach, shalach. So the, the different words are used, but conceptually they are the same. So here is what I suggest. I think it is intentionally intended to have multiple meanings. One of the meanings uh, is that God is obviously telling Pharaoh, hey, Israel is my firstborn, let Israel go release them so that they can exit uh, Egypt and, uh, you know, come out to serve me. Otherwise, I will kill your firstborn, the Pharaoh's firstborn. While he says that, there is a parallel, in a spiritual way, you can say, by the, by the ambiguity which is in the text, that God also says to Moses, in verse 23, release my son, my my firstborn released my son. So who is it? Circumcised Gershom or released my son. I don't know if it's Gershom or maybe uh, the second guy is Eliezer. Who was circumcised? Who was not circumcised? Because he says firstborn, perhaps we have to take Eliezer. Sorry, Gershom, who was the first one. Why was he not circumcised? Some rabbis think that, well, Moses did circumcise him, but not the Eliezer because he was a baby. We don't know any of that information from the text. Circumcised Gershom would be God's child, but before he was circumcised, so the uncircumcised Gershom is Moses' firstborn. So he's basically saying, really Moses telling, while he instructs Moses to tell Pharaoh to release Israel, he's also saying the same thing to Moses to release his firstborn, who is, Mo well, God's son, who will become God's son if Moses circumcises his own son. That means he dedicates. There is another, there is another rite in the Hebrew Bible called Pilion Haben, that is the redemption of the firstborn. Probably if that would have been the case, I think we could explain this um, through the Pilion Haben. But Pilion Haben is done on the 30th day. Circumcision is done on the 8th day. However, that Pidion Haben was not yet given. The Torah was not yet given. And only the circumcised could eat the Passover. So Moses' son could not have eaten the Passover. Possibly if Gershom was not circumcised, he couldn't have eaten the Passover. Therefore, he must be circumcised to be brought out of Egypt. That's what we would have to think. But it looks like there is a parallel. It's quite a tough passage, not because of Hebrew grammar, but because of how the whole text is written in a very ambiguous way. I hope you do like this video. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe uh, and comment and click the bell icon and I will come back to you with another video as soon as I can. Thank you very much.